Hey everybody, Patrick here with Rap4. It is April 29th, 2013, and this is Monday Night Paintball. Alright guys, time for some paintball news and industry trends. There's going to be a cool scenario going on in Chesapeake City, Maryland. Uh, at OXCC Paintball, it's called Sedition Part 2, the Sierra 242 Incident. This is going on May 18th from 9am to 4pm, and the storyline has to do with the plane crash in Simi Valley. It looks really action-packed, and if you go, be sure to take some pictures and video to show us what a good time you had. Last week in the UK, Tipman put on a pretty cool event called the Tipman Tactical Challenge. Now the idea here was to level the playing field for everybody in the game. They gave everybody the same marker, and they had tack caps. Uh, and they only give them 40 rounds in an urban environment. It was really cool to watch. Uh, there's some pretty cool footage out there on YouTube of it. Looking forward to seeing it again next year. There's a cool TV show coming out this fall all about paintball. It's called Painting the World Blue. Now this is going to be on um, primetime paintball in Europe. It's going to be six episodes and it's going to give you a view into the life of a professional paintball player. It looks pretty cool. For those of us in the U.S., you should be able to Hulu it or however you want to get it on the net. Um, definitely looking forward to watching that one. Paintball is really starting to catch on internationally, so much so that they're going to have a micro channel available on TV. The channel is going to be called Primetime Paintball TV. It's going to be in 32 countries in Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa via Sky Digital and Freesat. Can't wait to see this kind of movement in the US. Would love to be able to sit there and just watch paintball all day. This next video is from one of our official field testers uh, that we nicknamed Finch. You might have seen him in some videos from Operation End War 3. He was the very first person to use D-Mags in a public game. In this video, he shows a mod that he came up with for his D-Mags that makes loading first strike rounds a little bit easier. So here he is. Okay, the D-Mag modification to be able to load first strike rounds just as easily as you would normal paintballs. So here's a normal 10 round D-Mag. Take a first strike round and try and push it in there. It's a little difficult and tricky, it, it catches. Well, what it says on the box is that you must pull that door out, see how the door is up, and then take your first strike rounds and put it in there. And then when, you're, when you have a sufficient amount of first strike rounds, you Close that door very, very carefully, and you have first strike round loaded. Well, there's a simple and easy modification one can do to load first strike rounds with their paintballs, whereas with the paintballs you just push them in without having to pop the doors out, such as this, which I have already modified. Simple. Quite simple and easy. Let's take our handy dandy tool and let's pop open our D mag. part you are going to modify is right here. See those little horseshoes? You're going to modify those.
now you're going to want to so you have one side done now you want to do the second side so now that you have both sides completed let me show you what the purpose of that is so you take your garage door line it up in there the garage doors need that little area for that extra strong extra strong garage door tip to actually recess into so now you've got this right here see how it gives that extra room for the garage door the garage door plates to go into all right now let's take a first strike round and see if it worked Nice and easy. If you have any mods that you'd like to share with everybody, just go to our Facebook page and either post it to the wall or send me a PM. It might even make its way into Monday Night Paintball. Rat4 Ecuador is starting a new Milsim League called TAC-10 Paintball League in Ecuador. Here's some video. If you're in South America and you'd like to be involved, just go to rat4ecuador.com for more details. Now last week I asked you guys if you were running both a primary and a secondary weapon system, meaning that you had a marker, rifle type uh, paintball gun, and you also had a pistol for backup. It actually seemed to be a pretty common thing. A lot of you guys are wearing a uh, pistol just in case uh, maybe you're caught mid-reload or for you know CQB type situation. And that brings us to this week's topic of discussion which is comms. Do you and your teammates use radios to communicate with one another? And if you do, are you using some kind of a throat mic earpiece or is it just strapped to your vest? Go to our Facebook page and let us know. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Now remember, Monday Night Paintball is your show. We make it from the content generated from our Facebook page. So if there's anything you'd like to see in next week's episode, just go to facebook.com slash rat4usa and let us know. Looking forward to hearing from you. We'll see you out there.